<laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> hey Facebook, hey Instagram, I think we're going to it once. I am Courtney and this is Eric. Hi. <laughs> and we are in the color studio. If you're wondering just what was happening over there, no, we're not making pancakes. We're actually going to be highlighting my hair with light set, which comes in a box that looks like it is. Yay! <laughs> so it Eric, would have this in it. It would have that in it. <laughs> So Eric has done the honors of actually mixing all of this goodies up. Mm -hmm. Your lightener with your activator. Mm -hmm. And it's a very thick, pasty kind of texture. So it's important to thoroughly mix it. It will kind of start out chunky, but the more you mix, the smoother it will get. And if you don't have a bowl in your kit, don't be afeard. This little tray can serve as your mixing bowl and just go back and forth. And if you have questions while we're here, definitely ask us. Eric and I are here to help you because you requested this, so that's what we're a doing. And he's wearing the gloves that came in the set. Black one because the product is white, so it's easy to see if it got in your hands. <laughs> and he also has a towel standing by. So if he gets with water on it? Yeah, it's slightly <laughs> damp. So if I get something on it, I can just kind of clean my hands off. Make it easy. If I have product on it while I'm doing it, I'll leave like fingerprints throughout her hair. <laughs> I don't want to look like a cat. Mm -hmm. Not today. Maybe next week. <laughs> next week? So for you guys, you'll get instructions to guide you through your application. We're only going to do the top portion of my hair. And you may notice that it's significantly shorter than our last go around. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Month ago. I basically took off all of the length, so Eric is going to make me blonde again, or blonder. Yes. Blondish? Yeah. Blondish. Mm -hmm. Light set it. So we just did Courtney's hair color yesterday. Mm -hmm. So Notice my roots. You can, we recommend coloring within the week after doing your roots. You can do it the same day if you want, the next day. Yeah. Just don't let it go too long so that you have visible regrowth that you should have colored. So try and do it as closely to doing your roots as possible. So it will see everything nice and fresh all at the same time. Oh yeah. So this is- I'm a fan of make a day of it. Yeah. <laughs> this is where Courtney naturally parts her hair just slightly off center. So we're going to focus on... <laughs> this is a lot about me as a person. <laughs> slightly off center. We're going to basically focus off of her parts and a couple in the back and then really talk about how to do bangs because... I have them. Yeah, it's a little trickier. <laughs> some people have bangs, some people don't. Um, another thing too, because Courtney has highlighted in the past, it's been a while. A little bit. Yeah, it's been a while, but if you like look <laughs> at her hair, you can see that this portion is much darker than this portion. Which I don't mind. So we're going to basically <laughs> bring this lighter color back up into here. And I'm only going to color this in between portion because I don't want to lighten these end pieces anymore. If I do come across a dark piece all the way through the end, I'll lighten that too. We're just trying to make you look sunny too. Yeah, just refresh it. Subtle, very natural looking. And for me, this will be great for you guys too because I'm wearing my fringe a little bit longer. And sometimes I wear it to the right, sometimes I wear it to the left, sometimes it's a curtain where it's just open this way, and sometimes it just looks like a mess where I am right now. <laughs> so it'll be nice for Eric to refresh all of it. Mm -hmm. Now he's brushing me out. Very important. Start with combed hair. Yes, yes. You want to have nice and smooth hair. That's easy, easy to go. And if you're at all concerned with freehand painting your highlights like we're doing, you can always play around with it and use something like a, a the brush, like he's going to be painting on. And you can use a conditioner just to kind of get your hand used to that technique of painting on top of the hair. Sweeping, if you will. Yeah. That's what Valley Art means. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to leave her bangs out for now. I'm going to do those last. And I'm going to start with one side. And because of her bangs and how wide her like part is, 
I'm probably <laughs> gonna get about one, two, three pieces mm -hmm. on each side, and maybe one or two kind of towards the back. So it's not that you have to do a certain amount of them, it's that you do however many fit. And every time you do your application, it's gonna be just a little bit different. So don't get locked into, I did three on this side last time, I did three on this side last time. You might need four in the future. Mm -hmm. Just work with it as your haircut is changing and that type of thing. And go with your texture as well. I'm wearing my hair straight right now, so you're gonna see that it's gonna be more of elongated, not a, a straight is a bad word for it, just a nice slice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I took a, a slice of hair um, just maybe an inch wide or so, and I have some lightener on my brush. I want to keep it clean so I don't get stuff everywhere, and I'm going to focus on this portion here. I don't want to go all the way up to her scalp. I want to stay about uh, half an inch to an inch away, so I'm going to work my way up and just slowly paint on the product. And I'm going to do it at a steep angle with the, the high portion towards the front. And I'm doing this to avoid a harsh line of demarcation. So if I just did it like this, I'd have a such a blunt, blunt line. I don't want that. That we want to avoid. <laughs> I love the tension you're pulling on my hair, too. Sometimes if you kind of let the hair fall almost, it's harder to paint on that product. So make sure you have a really nice pull and give on the hair. And, and if I'm leaning too much, call me also. No, you're fine. Okay. So <laughs> as you can see too, I'm making sure that it's thoroughly saturated. You can see the product. It's white on top of there. You don't want to apply too lightly because then you're not going to you know, lighten that well. And you can see I kind of stopped towards the end because these are already blonde. And I'm just going to let that lay right where it is. No overlapping. Yep. Mm -hmm. And don't be worried about putting the hair that you've just painted right on top of all the other parts of it. It's not going to transfer, so that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. Because of its thick texture, it won't, um, yeah, it won't get on the, the hair kind of dries and creates a shell, so it prevents that from happening. Thanks for doing my highlight. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so pampered between my yesterday and today. So if one of our clients has yeah. a more monotone color mm -hmm. here, unlike Courtney, yes. would the highlight, the light set go all the way down to the root, to the end of the hair? Yeah, so basically what I'm doing, this portion up here would all be the exact same. And the only thing that's different, I would just continue the lightener all the way through the end. And if you do have long hair, let me just finish this kind of up here. I'll show you. Hey, Instagram, we're doing the following. You could continue up. everything all the way to the length of my hair on the end. We just don't want to brighten my ends up too, too much. Mm -hmm. And I have finer hair also. So that's why we're kind of letting it breathe on the end. So once you do this part, if you have long hair and when you're doing it yourself, it's easy, it's it's helpful to like use your hand at like the back of your hand as like a hard surface and just kind of paint across your hand. I love when you make a palette out of your hand. Yep. <laughs> and then you have your <laughs> towel to wipe wipe clean on it. <laughs> And it does get easier as you do this more. Mm -hmm. It's very forgiving mm -hmm. too. So don't feel like, don't be intimidated by it. Nah. Just kind of always remember that wherever you see the product, the lightener, mm -hmm. is where it's going to lighten. So if you want it somewhere and it's not there, put it there. <laughs> if it's somewhere <laughs> where you don't want it, get it off of there. <laughs> And also, if you get some of the lightener in an area where you're not happy with it, you could always just put a little water on there, and that'll stop it from working. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't get concerned halfway through. You could always have a little spray bottle with you and just spritz that little area, or just use your fingers to wipe it off. Instagram, do you guys have any questions? Hey, Instagram. Hey, Facebook. <laughs> I like the trust 
I've been putting into you right now. <laughs> I sort of like the big reveal after not seeing my head. Okay, so now I'm gonna move to the other side. Shall I swivel? Yeah, actually. Whee! Let's just do it this way. <laughs> So I'm basically going to do the exact same thing, kind of like match up my sections or my pieces. And I'm always going to make sure that my angle, the high part, is facing towards the front. What's your favorite part about freehand painting? Um, that I can put it exactly where I want it and I know it's going to stay there. Mm. Yeah, I prefer to to paint this way. It, you get to really put your own little artistic touch on it, which mm -hmm. is really nice, and your highlights are not going to be like anybody else's, which I enjoy. I'm an individual. If you're an individual, might as well have your own highlights. Hi, Eric. Uh, you have a Facebook question. Hi, Facebook. <laughs> Hi, Alice. Hi, Alice. Why do you have an angle at the top part of the left nightmare? Why do you have an angle at the top part of the lightner? So, the reason I do a steep angle is to avoid any blunt lines. So let me kind of show you. I'm not going to do it. Please don't. But I'll explain <laughs> to you what would happen. Basically, if I went like like straight up with the brush, that's going to create a very harsh blunt line, and I'm trying to avoid that. So it's not so noticeable when it starts to grow out. This keeps things natural. Um, it's not all the way up to her scalp, so it's just kind of like a natural sun-kissed look, you know? I always like to think about like little children on the beach, you know, like two and three-year-olds, where you see they have that kind of deep root, and then it slowly gets to that very light, bright end. That's basically what we're doing on my head, but we're totally faking the whole thing. I looked like that when I was a kid. I did too. Very, very blonde. You're still very blonde. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll paint Eric after this. That uh, would be an interesting before and I after. Ha <laughs> I haven't colored my hair in quite a long time. I know. So. He's naturally like this. Mm -hmm. Isn't anyone, everyone is jealous. Naturally, naturally this color. <laughs> Highly okay. manufactured, natural. <laughs> I like to warm it up and give it a little more strawberry oh, yeah. tone to it every once in a while. Put a little copper in there. You have been playing with pigments mm -hmm. lately. Mm -hmm. Oh, that actually brings us to, because you won't get to see this while we're gone. This bottle here is going to be my toner, and we're going to use that at the shampoo bowl after I've fully processed, just to make sure that I have a very cool highlight. Mm -hmm. So don't forget that step. Super cute. And we'll probably only use, what do you think, like a third of that too? Yeah, because Courtney one. doesn't have that long of hair. We won't yeah. end up using a whole lot of it. So you can save what you didn't use mm -hmm. for a week later. You know, when you feel it's time to freshen it up, you just use it again. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Yes. We'll be doing our fringe last. And because they're so much shorter too, so that's part of it. And for me, if you needed to in the front, if you didn't necessarily want to have your fringe laying on top of your, your face, you could always put a little cotton underneath it if you didn't want it to lay directly on it. So if you have some handy cotton balls, that's a good thing too. That's a colorist tip. <laughs> yep. So if I was doing this at home, the back portion of my head, I'd pull it up over my head and I'd paint upward. Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing. Yeah, I'll kind of show you how that would look. <laughs> Fake it for them. <laughs> yeah, so if you were doing it yourself, you could hold the hair up like this and paint like this. <laughs> if that makes sense. That was me miming it. Yeah, it would be. Mm -hmm. doop, 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 doop. It's a little hard for me because I'm standing behind. Well, I can shrink. Do you want me to get over for you? But that's kind of like. Yeah, pretty much. The thing, you know. And when I would put this down, I get the same, the exact same effect. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's important to note too that this is more of a sun-kissed highlight, so it's not super harsh. Mm -hmm. So even if um, you feel less confident in the back of your head, it'll still look good. Yeah. It's all going to melt into each other. And even with these.
these type of highlights, we always say let your hair kind of do its thing for a day or two before you judge it because a lot of times the hair will sort of open up in a couple of days and you'll really notice that the highlights melt into your hair. Let it marinate. <laughs> uh -huh. Two kind of pieces <laughs> in the back, so when it some of it falls back, it will be done. So basically, that's my whole top section off of her part, and now I'm going to move on to her bangs. <laughs> I feel like I'm at that total Disneyland ride when I go around in circles like this. <laughs> awesome. Put this over here. So making sure my hands are always clean. <laughs> See, I got some product on there. Just. It happens. Yep. <laughs> Are you giving me two sections or one? Um, let me see. So, <laughs> some people who have really thick bangs, like say they go back really far. Not me, necessarily. Um, you could section the bangs off into multiple sections, so like take half of them at a time and paint on this area and then let this fall on top and paint that area too. Um, I'll do actually, I'm going to do two and just put a couple underneath. Okay. For me, I have a very odd gray pattern. I'm not as gray around the front of my hairline, so you will notice that I'm darker up here. A lot of times that's the opposite for for a lot of folks. So you'll see more of my hair is light around here because I can't quite get this to lighten up as much. So I'm very thankful <laughs> that he's doing this right now. So I'm being very careful when I clip that back that I'm not disturbing my other pieces. Mm -hmm. Rhonda's asking, where is Hi, this Rhonda. place? Where is this place? We are in El Segundo, California. Actually, such a good question. If you're in the local LA area or Hollywood, you can come into our studio and have your color applied. You can get a consultation. You could get highlights. Yay! Um, but you can always look online and book online. So hopefully you're close to us. But that's where we are. Hi. We're in our color studio. Hi. Highlighting fringe. Mm -hmm. If they're not in the area, how mm -hmm. can they get this done? You can always go to eSalon.com and you can pick it up under the hair color section. But I would recommend using our color for your base and using our highlights as well so we can guide you in the best pairing of your kit. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't used us before, you can always have a, uh, a conversation. That's not even a word. <laughs> a conversation <laughs> with one of our colors. You can call us and use online chat. Or um, you can send us an email. So whatever you like best. Mm -hmm. We're here for you. So with her bangs, um, you know, they're smaller than the rest of her hair. So I'm naturally taking smaller sections and pieces too. So how do you know which way to angle the bangs since they're all of the hairs are in the front? Um, I'm basically just kind of alternating like this, because I'm going to do one in the center right here. Mm -hmm. Basically, I just kind of have to pick. <laughs> 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 There's no specific, it needs to go this way or another way. And that's the genius of freehand painting, that you can decide what works better for your hair. Mm -hmm. And for mine, especially like we were saying before, I wear it all sorts of ways. So it's easy for mine to go this way because you know some days it'll be to the right, some days it'll be to the left, some days it's in the middle. So you don't have to get too tied down into exactly how you're placing it. Make your head an art piece. <laughs> and that's what I was saying before where 
if you're uncomfortable with having the lightener by your face, you could always put a little cotton underneath mm -hmm. it. This is not my first rodeo, so I'm okay here. <laughs> and I'm just going to sit in this chair for quite a while afterwards. And we're going to process these for about how long? Half an hour? Yeah, 25 30, minutes? Just 30 minutes. So our highlighting kit and lightener can lighten your hair up to three levels. So everybody has a different starting point. So it's we can't say it's going to be exactly this. It kind of has a lot to do with where you're starting mm -hmm. at and how long it's left on. We do have specific timing based off of your hair color. So be sure to you know take a look at your instructions and follow that timing because it's that will give you the best results based on your starting hair color. And you will get lighter over time. You know, the more sets you use, you're going to be seeing more highlights and more brightness. And the hair does tend to oxidize. So you will see a lighter hair over time. And it's just supposed to be very natural. You're definitely not going to go from a dark brown to a platinum in one use with this. Mm -hmm. How to maintain your highlights. A lot of it has to do with the shade that you're at. Mm -hmm. So if you're, for instance, a medium brown, you're probably going to only be highlighting every couple of months. A shade like mine that's much lighter, I do mine probably every other time I color my hair because you really notice it a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely maintain it in the intermediate time with tint rinse. Mm -hmm. to make sure that you're balancing out the brightness of your highlights. That's huge. You don't want them to look crappy. Mm -hmm. And just try to notice how often you're col coloring your roots, too. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And if, they're, if your highlights are going too bright or they're not bright enough, you can always speak with our colorist. And then we can kind of guide you. Maybe you need to be doing your highlights a little bit more often, maybe less often. It totally has to do with you, and also cut makes a big difference. My hair was much longer before. I cut off about eight inches of it, just because I, I felt like it more than anything else. <laughs> so, um, you know, that makes a big difference, too. If you get a big haircut, you might need to do your highlights a couple of times to get it back to having a brightness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're a painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm done. And we're done. Guys, Super we easy. Expect, uh, request for our next Facebook Live. Yeah, let us know if there's specific types of hair color applications or techniques you want to see. We're happy to do them. I'm going to cook here for about a half an hour, and you'll see an after of us. But cool. yeah, we're in the color studio. Come say hi okay. here in LA. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. See you guys. soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>